Ewan, is this a direwolf? It depends on who you ask. Colossal has held the company line that this is a direwolf. In some of their technical documents, they'll call it a, a proxy direwolf. If you think that introducing 20 of the, you know, more than 10 million variants that distinguish uh, direwolves from grey wolves makes it a direwolf enough, then, then it's a direwolf. Uh, a lot of people don't. And you've been writing about de-extinction as a whole for your feature article. What's the kind of scientific feeling across the board about this technology? Hopeful trepidation, maybe, is how I'd put it. I mostly spoke with people who are kind of working in this sphere and interested in, in applying it to conservation. And, you know, the, the sense is that these technologies could actually be helpful, number one, in preventing extinctions. Number two, maybe, maybe bringing things back that did important things to ecosystems. I think a lot of people were concerned about this being the claim debut for this technology. And Colossal would say that this was a, a good test case. These technologies, you know, are, are, are getting pretty mature and ready to help with the biodiversity crisis. And one can't help but think of Jurassic Park. Nobody's talking about dinosaurs. Some people say that these proxy direwolves, these gene edited gray wolves, whatever you want to call them, they're created for spectacle and not for conservation. And that's, you know, they, they very much fit the Jurassic Park model um, in, in, in that sense.